by the early 1800s, the concept of royal forests had largely disappeared, although Exmoor still remained. Enter John Knight, a wealthy man from Worcestershire, already an accomplished agriculturalist, who went about buying practically all of the old royal forest and set in progress development that would have huge effect. His plan was to turn Exmoor into a single estate, one thing he never actually achieved. What he did do, however, was turn significant amounts of wilderness into more productive land. He had banks and hedges constructed, hundreds of miles of them built by hand, which stand to this day. He built, or started to build, a boundary around the huge estate area. He commissioned a mansion to be built in Simmonsbath, the centre of his lands, and his vision was to control the whole estate from there. He created a reservoir, Pinkery Pond, to generate his water supply and provide water power. He had a sawmill built at Simmons Bath too. This water-driven facility was designed to supply cut wood for his whole estate and is maintained and occasionally run by enthusiasts to this day. Then, in 1837, just 17 years after he moved here, John Knight and most of his family left. No one is exactly sure why, but his line and his vision was continued and developed by one of his sons, Frederick. The plans included developing Porlock Weir as a port. It never happened, but the railway built to serve it was started. But in the end, the grand plan simply couldn't be sustained. Even the great mansion, the centre of the estate at Simmons Bath, was never completed. What remains now formed part of the hotel and an outdoor education centre. But even though John Knight never succeeded in his grand plan, what was astonishing was the vision and impact this one man, albeit with the help of staff and several hundred labourers, could make. And the landscape of Exmoor will bear the mark of John Knight and his family far into our future.